Today we have the Rode Broadcaster in the studio. It is a end address condenser microphone, usually used for broadcast work. We're gonna go over everything for this microphone. We're also gonna test it out, so let's go ahead and get to it. What's up, audio nerds? Welcome to the Audio Hotline. Hey, what do you know? A rare sighting on the Audio Hotline. A Rode microphone. Okay, I've done, like, a ton of Rode reviews recently, but... Hey, I don't see anyone complaining. Are you... Oh. I mean, soon enough we're gonna run out of Rode microphones to try out, though. As said before, here is the Rode Broadcaster. You can find this online, usually going for about $419. Usually I have Amazon affiliate links in the description for all my videos for the microphones that I test out, and today I, s I still will. But I do want to warn you that Rode does not honor their warranty if you buy one of their microphones from Amazon. I know, I know, it sucks. So I will also have some additional links down below of other places that you can buy it. Today I am recording the Rode Broadcaster with my Zoom H5 with the gain set at about 41%. I am using a Mogami XLR cable and I will occasionally be using this Rode windscreen. Also a link for this will be down in the description. Well now let's go ahead and jump into some things about the Rode Broadcaster. When you purchase the Rode Broadcaster you will get the Rode RM2 stand mount. You will get a 5 pin adapter that will actually allow you to send out a signal to an on-air sign, the Rode ZP1 zip pouch, and this thing is just a nice leather build, and you will also get the Rode Broadcaster microphone. When it comes to the build of the Rode Broadcaster and its accessories, I don't really have too much to complain about. I do think it is a solid build quality, and everything that comes with it feels really good. I do wish that the mic build was just a little bit more sturdy. A lot of broadcast microphones are like really sturdy. Like the Procaster, you could beat someone to death with that thing. Like, easily. This one I'm not so sure about. It's not that the build quality is bad, it just kind of feels like they took the Rode NT1 and were kind of like, whoop, let's pull these ends out, let's square it out a little bit, and uh, cool. And then they just added this little doohickey little switch here with the base roll off. But the grill is metal, it is tough, the whole body is really nice. I wish that this plastic thing was metal, but I think it's okay. Just to me, when the NT1A feels nearly identical to this, and it's $229, and this one's $419, it makes me feel like they just should have made it a little bit more sturdy. Well, now that we've talked about some of the basics of the Rode Broadcaster, let's go ahead and nerd out and talk about the specs. The Rode Broadcaster is a large diaphragm and address condenser microphone. The Broadcaster has an internal pop filter that is supposed to minimize plosives. It has a one inch capsule, a cardioid polar pattern, and a frequency range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. This has an output impedance of 40 ohms, a max SPL of 128 decibels, a sensitivity of negative 34 decibels, an equivalent noise level of 14 dBA, and a phantom power requirement of either 24 or 48 volts. And this is, of course, an XLR mic. When looking at the frequency response graph of the Rode Broadcaster, you can tell that they were definitely not shy about what they were boosting and how they wanted it to sound. The boosts that they make in the frequency response are quite popular moves when it comes to broadcast and podcast tone. One other additional feature that the Rode Broadcaster does have is it actually has a high pass filter switch right here. With that adapter that comes with this microphone, you can actually set it up so you can send out a signal to an on-air sign Set it up outside of your room, and whenever you are recording, it will light up. That's pretty freaking sweet. I think I'm going to do it, because then my cats won't just barge in at any moment. You know, they'll see the sign, they'll be like, you know what? Thanks, Dad. I'm going to be respectful, because that's definitely how cats think. Enough of the overview and specs. Let's go ahead and move on to testing this microphone out. If you're just so excited about the new Stranger Things season, but you don't have anyone to cuddle with, so you grab your Rode Broadcaster and hold it real close? Here's how it would sound. And if Stranger Things is just having too many of those ominous tones, those 808 hits, so you decide to do the bass roll off and get real close to the mic, 
Here's how it's going to sound. And if the broadcaster gets cold while you're watching Eleven destroy shit, be a gentleman, go grab it a blanket, and then snuggle up real close. Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled peanutses. Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled peanutses. With the bass roll off. Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled peanutses. 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 And if you're one of those people that talks past the microphone, angles the mic a little bit, so you're not getting plosives right into it, here's how they could sound. Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled peanutses. Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled peanutses. If you talk directly into the capsule of the road broadcaster, here's how it sounds. If you talk into the side of the microphone, here's how it sounds. And if you talk into the back of the road broadcaster, here is how it sounds. If you're going to get this microphone for YouTube gaming or podcasting, here is how the microphone performs with a keyboard being typed on it really hard behind it. If you want to get this microphone for podcasting or anything where you want some post-processing on it, here is how it would sound with some compression, some de-essing, something to help the noise floor when the compression brings that noise floor up. And if I do anything to the EQ, I'll just put it right here. But here is how it would sound with some post-processing. And even though this microphone has an internal pop filter, if you decide you want to get a windscreen for it while you're doing your podcast, here is how it could sound with post-processing on it with the windscreen. If you're a YouTuber that has a podcast, maybe wants to get this microphone, but also wants to use it for their videos, but doesn't want the microphone in the camera shot, then here's how it could sound about three feet away from me. Now I'll just do one more quick test of the bass roll off. Here's me talking into the Rode Broadcaster with the EQ flat. And here is me talking into the Rode Broadcaster with the high pass filter engaged. Even though it's meant for spoken word, I'm just going to play the acoustic guitar into it real quick, just test it out a little. Well, now that we've gone through the overview, the specs, and the testing, let's go ahead and get to my review of the Rode Broadcaster. Even though I have proclaimed my love toward some Rode microphones in the past, don't worry, I will be completely honest i'm not going to be biased at all like overall i do like the sound of this microphone i do think it has a very good broadcast style sound this is one of the few microphones that i actually really liked the high pass filter i thought that it really helped out the microphone and it sounded really good like i said earlier when it comes to the build of this microphone i do think it is very solid but as i said before i kind of wish that it was a little less like the nt1a and a little bit more like the procaster because a lot of people are going to want to use this microphone for podcasting and i feel like a lot of podcasters are on the go a decent amount so the idea of putting this into your backpack instead of a hard case, I'm not crazy about that. I would much rather put it in a designated hard case and carry it around than put it in the leather bag and put it in my backpack. It would definitely survive some backpack rides, but I would just be a nervous wreck about it, especially at the relatively high price point that this microphone's at. There are definitely other microphones that have better background noise rejection, but that's to be expected here because this is a condenser microphone. Even though it is end address, which reminds us of other like Procasters, SM7Bs, that have better background noise rejection than this. This is still a condenser microphone. It's a little bit more sensitive, so it will pick up more background noise. But for it being a condenser microphone, it does do a pretty good job. I don't feel like this microphone sounded even kind of okay on the acoustic guitar. I felt like it was pretty atrocious. Sometimes other like broadcast style microphones can do a really good job on instruments, but this is definitely not one of them. But overall, I do stick to the fact that this microphone does sound good. I do wish that the plosives were a little bit better without the windscreen, but once again, we're dealing with a condenser microphone. Even with the internal pop filter, I felt like sometimes they were a little too much. But this could definitely create some awesome sounding podcasts, and it could sound really great on a broadcast. Like some of those people's voices would sound insane on this microphone. So yeah, there were some pros and cons to me, and it all just kind of comes down on are those cons outweighing the pros for you in particular? For me, I feel like I like this microphone more than I dislike this microphone. But one thing I am having a hard time swallowing is the $419 price tag. So getting it used could be the right move here, even though you won't get the warranty secondhand. 
I do think that it could save you a lot of money and that would definitely be worth it. But actually, I didn't purchase this microphone. I traded for this microphone with my boy from Obscure Mics. You got to check out that channel. He is awesome. I love you, Jeremy. But yeah, him and I traded for this and I think that he said he bought this for a little over $200. Maybe it was like $220 to $250, somewhere in there. So getting it for that price, I think that's an awesome deal. But regardless, I have to base my grade off of the new price. So, without further ado, the grade that I give the Rode Broadcaster is a B+. Plus. I do feel like this microphone is perfect for what its name is, for broadcasting. I do think it would sound really great on a lot of people's voices for podcasting and broadcasting and spoken word. Some people that are starting a podcast that want to get a microphone may benefit from a different one depending on how their voice sounds, but I do feel like if you have a broadcast sounding voice, you're going to love this thing. But overall, I am happy with this microphone. I think it sounds really good. Thanks for watching this review of the Rode Broadcaster. I hope that it helped you out, helped you decide whether you want this microphone or not. But most of all, I hope you had fun. Stay tuned for a lot more reviews, a lot more comparisons, a lot more tutorials, and tip vids. Thank you to all of the people that like and subscribe. I really do appreciate you. And thank you for watching the audio hotline. I'll see you audio nerds next time.